So guys, last year I was not able to take my own games as seriously as I wanted. I was basically only able to get about five good months with PE because I started two businesses about the same time. They took off much faster because of your guys' support, so thank you. But because of that, and since it was a one-man show for a while, I was not able to stretch my penis as much as I wanted to. And after doing a bit of soul searching, I still want a gigantic dick for whatever apparent reason beyond financial motive. So this is my plan to grow 1% month after month after month. There will be changes as the results come in, but this is my tentative plan throughout the year. My main issue was consistency. So this year i'm making sure that i'm consistent as possible if i want it i have to make the sacrifices to get it one disclaimer though this is going to have a few experimental things in it i don't know the efficacy of it if you're looking for the proven way i think penis enlargement works check out my books in the description below bd's big book of length bd's garth expansion pack you can get it in a bundle but for the most part i am pulling mostly from my book and trying out a few new things to make this more optimized. If you're interested in my stuff and don't want to dig through my entire YouTube channel and Reddit catalog to find the easiest way to gain, get my book. It'll be updated as I prove my theories. So the next question is, I am trying to gain one inch in a year based off of 1% linear progression. Is that even possible? In my own experience, it is very possible to gain one inch in a year. At my level though, it might be quite difficult because we have a bit of adaptation response that we have to overcome. But I have not given a full year to PE since I was still in high school. There's a good chance that I can pull it off, especially with the new stuff that I have found. We're talking about one eighth an inch, less than one eighth an inch a month. So if we think that is such a minuscule amount, over 12 months, it should be relatively easy to gain that much, specifically for someone who is considered a expert in the field. I don't really consider myself an expert. I just do this for fun, to be honest. But um, I think I can pull it off. If not, we'll at least have some good content for you guys and you can learn something from my mistakes. And also we can figure out what's actually reasonable for penis enlargement. But basically, I'm trying to go from eight and a quarter of inches. I know I said I was a little bit bigger in a few other streams. Either I lost a bit of size from lack of work or I was sick when I measured a couple days ago, so that's why I was smaller. I will have a better idea of how big I am come February if the gains didn't make up for that loss in size, if that makes sense. By the end of December, I plan to be nine and a quarter inches long. So we are really getting up there in size if I can actually pull this off. So how am I planning to do this? Let's first talk about the science a bit. And I'm not making shit up like certain other YouTubers talking about penis enlargement say you only need to play sports in high school to have a big dick. That is far from the case. Um, <laughs> I am trying to show you like a scientific background behind all this. I'm not a, like a classically trained scientist when it comes to this stuff. I just know how to read a research paper. So bear with me, but the main idea behind penis enlargement is cyclical stretching. This causes fatigue to the collagen fibrils in the penis, which is the main structure of the penis. If we can stretch out those collagen fibrils, convince our bodies to grow more collagen, we will get a longer and thicker penis over time. So I already talked about one way that is through cyclical stretching. Then we need to basically fill in the meat inside the connective tissues that would be the corpus cavernosum we'll be doing that with expansion work there's a few research studies that i found that show the efficacy of pumping and how actually it works i will get to that in another video then to make sure that my expansion training is potent and fully fleshed out i will be adding in a bit of hypoxic stimulant through clamping to make these gains. So the experimental part of this is what I'm calling the cell stretch theory. I shared with you guys two weeks ago a research paper that basically shows that the more violently you stretch the cells responsible for collagen production, the more active they are. So we need a lot of force right at the beginning of our workouts to the cells in particular to get more gains 
as we proceed. More gains as in what we're currently seeing. So with cyclical strain, you'll see a gradual increase in size with, let's, we're calling the cell stretch theory, we will see more gains violently, <laughs> on paper at least. The issue is though, is that since we're dealing with the protein responsible for the structure of a tissue, it is gonna be responsible for holding most of that um, stress. So we need to figure out a way to limit its capacity to uh, handle this stress. So the first thing that we're going to do is warm up the tunica. I am using five minutes of heat before my session. I'm also making it a priority to relax, and I touched on this a bit, and it needs to probably be another video on its own about getting into a very calm parasympathetic state so that way your connective tissues relax as you stretch them rather than fighting against you. That's the importance of heat and a bit of meditation really right before your sessions. Then what we're going to do is a bit of tunica release. Now I don't have my gua sha blade right beside me, but essentially we're just gonna do 50 scrapes on the shaft each side. Okay, <laughs> and then after that we're gonna do something called BFR compresses or BFR massage. So we're gonna put a cock ring on, we're gonna get semi-erect, and we're gonna work up and down the shaft. The main difference is how deep and how hard you press. Compressions are gonna be for more advanced guys that are gonna have thicker tunicas like myself. Massages would be for you know the typical guy that just started PE six months ago. Then, after all that's said and done, you're gonna take off the cock ring and we're gonna do some semi-erect stretching. This is what I'm thinking is going to be the key to cell stretch theory. Now this has been done on matters of size for a bit, but they will do it fully erect. That's very dangerous because there's like no give in the tunica whatsoever. We want a minor amount of give, mainly just so our hands have somewhere to be placed without putting strain on the nerve bundle. So we're gonna imagine this guy is erect. We're gonna grip at the base. So we're gonna take two hands, grip right here, pull out, as hard as, well, not necessarily as hard as we can, but harder than we typically do with stretching. 15 seconds, relax. Come back, 15 seconds, relax. Do this 10 to 15 times, 15 to 30 seconds. Again, none of this is actual advice yet. I'm trying it out for myself and assessing the risk profile, but after doing it for a week, I have not had any issues other than a bit of more beat up skin than normal. Because remember, we're actually stretching our tissues similar lead to how we would do it say with length pumping or with a tight fitting cylinder because all we're doing is while fully expanded we are stretching upwards so i've never gotten injured pumping i've never gotten injured length pumping it's just a different kind of stress i don't think length pumping in general will be good for this because it's going to be like a gradual stretch we need it to be pretty off the cuff burst and that's why it's relatively dangerous but if you're gonna try this at home, which I'm not recommending you do right now, make sure you are semi-erect. When I explain this on one of my demonstrations that you can find on the Reddit, you wanna be able to flick the tip of your penis and have it bounce a bit when you're semi-erect. You don't want any rigidity whatsoever. Full, but not, um, full, but not hard, if that makes sense. So, I talked about this already, that I'm basically just going off my book, but let's break it down and actually talk about what I am doing. So for you guys that are either new to PE or don't really know the science of it, I am trying to gain length. So that means I need to create more collagen over time in the tunica albuginea, particularly in that direction to continuously see gains. So. Most research studies show that collagen grows from stretching. So the more often we pull on the tissue, a adaptation response happens that causes more collagen proteins to be produced by the stem cells in the penis. Based off of those research studies, there is a point where if you're about four to six percent longer while under load, so while you're doing your stretches and stuff, you've hit the amount of fatigue needed to see gains. So if you go to that point four to five times a week, you will gain. That's the premise of my book. How exactly am I going to get that elongation? First of all, I am using 
the Apex Extender. Now, this was given to me by my friend, and I guess you can call him mentor, Adam, over at Massive Novelties, aka Permix Swerve. So this is a fantastic device, in my opinion. It is probably my favorite device for length. Essentially, it turns extending into hanging, which makes it much more streamlined and time efficient compared to normal extending. Also, you stretch in two directions, so that way you fully isolate the shaft. We are going to be using my own company's vacuum cups for this um, connecting to my penis to the device, but you can use any vacuum cups that you can find for the apex extender. So what I'm planning to do for elongation is six five minute sets at about 50 millimeters of compressed spring length, which would be about 10 pounds of tension. It really depends on your level of how much tension you need to do, but since I've been doing this for so long and have a really good idea of how much tension I need to grow, that's what I'm going with. After that, we are going to do some expansive work. This is the Peak Mount Physique Auto Pump. Again, it doesn't need to be a fancy auto pump. It can be any type of penis pump when I'm doing. The important thing is, is that there's a gauge. What I'm doing is trying to stretch out the internals of the penis more. So like you can stretch the bands that run up and down and you can stretch the bands that go side to side. For length, it seems like you need about 80% stretching up the length and then about 20% stretching around the girth for like, optimal gain. So what I'm going to be doing is five sets of two minutes of interval pumping. That has been shown to get me a lot of expansion with minimal edema. And since we're just trying to kind of flush out the tunica albuginia, we do not need a lot of time under pressure. So I'm then going to do hypoxic clamping right after my interval pumping. I might take a few minutes off to let, you know, fresh blood come in, but all I'm going to do is get erect, put three to four cock rings on my penis, and then leave them on for 10 minutes. This signals the body to release a bunch of vasoendothelial growth factor, signaling the production of blood holding tissue in my penis. So that way, I am getting all the stretching and elongation I need, and then I'm able to effectively fill in that tissue with hypoxic clamping. This is different than the clamping that you would see like on a jelk for you or thunder's place. Those are what I consider expansive methods. They're more meant to be a replacement for pumping, but that is not necessarily the best thing that we want for an angiogenic stimulus. Then <laughs> we have my supplementation. Now I'm not really a big uh, proponent of supplementation but like when you start adding up the percentages and when you're trying to gain as much as I am in such a short period of time it might be a good idea to buff your percentages a bit full disclaimer though I own the brand of supplements that I'm talking about except for two and I'll talk about them in a second but virility and vitality I am taking to increase blood flow to the penis specifically it's their aphrodisiacs to increase penile activity. So in turn, it'll increase blood flow to the penis. So with Vitality, I am mainly looking for the Fajit extract, the Shilajit extract, my bad. I am mainly looking for the Shilajit extract in Vitality, along with the Fagodia adritis. And I guess Tonga Ali. Hank really made the shit out of these guys. They're, they're, it's awesome, <laughs> okay? Then for virility, this is mainly for making messes. So like if you want bigger cum loads, this is a really good supplement. Hank is in the process of reworking it. He is a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff, but it's still pretty damn good as it is. For penis enlargement though, I am specifically looking for the maca root, which is a libido enhancer. Then we have vigor, which I prefer to take as a pre-workout in the gym because you know, it just makes for massive pumps, but Speaking of pumps, it increases blood flow and vasodilation, so that way you get a fuller flaccid potentially, as well as your pumping sessions are gonna be a little bit more effective. So like, if we can eke out, let's say three to 5% more gains with that three stuff, that's gonna help me get past the 1% linear metric. Then, two other things that I'm trying are Sustanch extract, which like the Pagodia adritis and the Shilajit increase blood flow to the genitals. They are an aphrodisiac. This has been useful. 
then the mania leaves also increase blood flow to the genitals. So we are trying to push as much blood as we can in for active recovery. On top of that, I am taking five milligrams of Cialis a day. That is a relatively low dose. I really don't need it. I'm taking five milligrams of Cialis because if something is going to be stunting my recovery, whether it be lack of sleep or a harsh diet or illness, I want my erection quality to be very consistent during this time and same with the activity. So a little bit of Cialis goes a long way for me because I'm a relatively healthy individual, but your results may vary. That is also, none of this is really medical device. This is just what I'm doing. I don't care what you guys do, <laughs> okay? But this is what I think is going to lead to the best gains. That's gonna wrap it up for today. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what I'm doing. I will have a, an update in probably about a month or so. I will be updating sooner on the Reddit because I'll be adding pictures as we go. And also on gettingbigger.io, that's the form, the safe haven, if you will, from reddit if you don't like reddit or if you want something that has more structure than reddit does so check that out if you're interested in that join the subreddit r slash getting bigger like and subscribe as that has been trying to subliminally tell you for the past 20 minutes and i will see you in the next one also let me know how much you like this style of video more i put a little bit more effort in it than i normally do so any feedback would be greatly appreciated so again i'll see you later